Not again. I'm not going. There's nothing you can do to make Whoa. <laughs> travel movies. Just the base concept alone is enough to really spark the imagination and get you thinking about all sorts of fun and exciting what ifs. Where would you go? What would you do? Who would you talk to? And probably most importantly, what would you change? I mean, Mark Twain was writing about it in his 1889 novel, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, where a 19th century man from Hartford, Connecticut gets hit in the head and wakes up in medieval England. This story, in particular, has remained so insanely popular that, in over a century, it's been remade for movies and TV around a, a kajillion times. And all of these versions play with the same core concept of, how much fun would it be to blow the minds of people from the past? with modern day technology. Eat cats, giants, we're doomed. Which brings us to a kid in King Arthur's court or Aki cock for you acronym fans. Disney's second, or third, attempt at making this story. This time, though, it's attempting to make it accessible to a generation of 90s kids. It kind of works in all of the ways that you would expect it to. So it's bad. It's good. Right. And if it's cool, it's hot. Oh, I fear I will never understand your valley speak. Now, I was one of those 90s kids, and while I enjoyed the hijinks and concept, wasn't really something that stood out in the sea of like-minded content. So it just kind of evaporated from my memory and lived with all the other sea level nostalgia, gone and mostly forgotten. So it's kind of crazy that in all of these years, I had no idea that a sequel to A Kid in King Arthur's Court even existed. Looking back at it now, it's not all that difficult to see why. The original opened at number nine, it got terrible reviews, didn't do anything particularly new, and to Disney's credit, they were one and done and completely bailed on a follow-up, which is totally nuts, right? Disney turning down the opportunity to make a sequel? Despite all that, the production company still pushed forward on a sequel using the exact same producers and writers as the first film. But what does a sequel to Aki Kak even look like? I mean, maybe you can kind of continue the storyline where it left off, where the tables are turned and now it's characters from the past are using their knowledge to solve modern day issues and... Nah, they didn't even bother try building off of the original whatsoever. It's like none of that ever happened. Trimark Home Video is proud to present the direct-to-video sequel to Disney's enormously successful A Kid in King Arthur's Court, A Kid in Aladdin's Palace. Calvin Fuller, the unlikely hero of A Kid in King Arthur's Court, is back in time again. I am not going. There's nothing you can do to make me. He teams up with a beautiful princess and a mystical genie to save Aladdin and all of Arabia from the evil Luxor. The genie is mine. A Kid in Aladdin's Palace. Fun and adventure for the entire family. Exclusively from Trimark Home Video. Rated PG. We are instead given a very similar movie, but with generic Middle Eastern fantasy tropes filling in for the medieval ones. Though we do at least get the kid from the first film. As the title implies, this time around we follow Aladdin. Kind of. So follow me here. Aladdin, who is now an older sultan, seals the genie and the magic lamp in the Cave of Wonders to prevent his evil brother from getting a hold of it. His brother poisons Aladdin, and so the genie brings Calvin, the main character from the first film, back in time to help. Hilarity should ideally ensue. Now this is definitely one of those kinds of sequels where it feels like the writers are working off of one big checklist that borrows elements from the first movie. The kid strikes out there, the kid strikes out here. There's a princess love interest there, there's a princess love story here. There's a creepy bad guy there. There's a creepy bad guy here. There's a black knight bad guy good guy twist there. You get the picture. There's also something off about the humor in this one. A lot of it feels like the filmmakers are trying way too hard to make it seem amped up or, or edgy, but it just comes off so... so... No. Cringy. Alibaba and the Three Thieves? Hummus? Couscous, and Bob.
Well, at least he's not named after food. Short for kebab. <laughs> it also definitely leans much heavier into the fantasy realm than the first film, while trying to be bigger and more adventurous. But without those Disney dollars, the filmmakers are clearly working with a smaller budget, so we get some really bottom of the barrel CGI here, even for the mid 90s. So now, having traveled back to ancient Arabia, Calvin discovers that he has to free the genie in the lamp in order to wake up Aladdin and save the kingdom. Basic setup for a quest, eh, but it gets the job done, I guess. This genie, by the way, definitely on the sassy side. He seems to have a habit of using big over the top cartoonish gestures to hammer a point home. Quick, I have to save Aladdin. But first, I want a piece of that. Mmm, oily, but good. I was having a little bit of a sugar dip. But I'm back in the zone. I wonder where the inspiration for that came Such from. A crick in the neck. Mm. Calvin inadvertently rescues Alibaba, who plays the role of the is he isn't he a good guy. But he's at least able to help him sneak into the palace where we're introduced to the princess and the first of many unnecessarily cringe scenes in this movie. Princess! <gasps> Why do you enter my private quarters? I'm looking for a thief and a boy. Look around. I see only girls here. Hello. I have not seen you before. Perhaps you would like to get to know her better. Um, yes! Yes, come! Go. <laughs> you may use my private quarters. <sighs> that apparently is enough to convince the princess that Calvin is the real deal, so she and the queen give up the secret directions to the Cave of Wonders and the Lamp. And so Aladdin, Alibaba, and the princess set off on their journey, all while being trailed by the evil brother's guards. The rest of the movie plays out pretty predictably. The group run into trials and tribulations that they're easily able to overcome, sometimes with a twist involving modern technology. Get ready. Look behind you. <laughs> The idea that Alibaba is just in this for the treasure is thrown around, but we all know that he's firmly in the thief with the heart of gold role. There's this romantic side story with the princess, because again, that, that also happened in the first film, I guess. Calvin. Calvin. We get cringe. Lots and lots of cringe. Ah, my queen. You have never looked more radiant. Your perception needs an education, my husband's brother. Indeed I am, but I am also your sultan. And a sultan has needs. I'm not interested in your needs, sir. You will be soon. This used to be such a happy place. Calvin and the crew eventually make it to the Cave of Wonders and snatch the lamp, but surprise, surprise, the big bad brother has been waiting for him the whole time and takes both the lamp and the princess back to the kingdom. Let her go, Luxor. She is no longer your concern. With Alibaba's help, Calvin is able to quickly get back just in time to rescue the princess and participate in one of the worst final battles in a 90s movie ever. He has the lamp! We must stop him! How? A magic carpet? Hurry! I never want to forget this moment. You won't. And let's not forget the cringe crescendo because of course there is. Oh, 
no. <laughs> And with that, Aladdin is revived, the kingdom is saved, and Calvin must say his goodbyes before returning to his own time with the princess and the flying carpet. Listen. I really, really want to like A Kid in Aladdin's Palace, just purely on a 90s cheese ball level. Maybe if the story wasn't so much of a retread of the first movie, or if the hijinks were more funny than gross out, or if the special effects didn't look like they were made on the original iMac, you, you get the point. Overall, pretty easy to see why Disney bailed on it. Weirdly enough, rather than make this one, Disney instead decided to take yet another crack at trying to adapt that same basic Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court story just one year later, this time in a TV movie titled A Night in Camelot, starring Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> but I mean, does it have a poop scene? For fuck. <laughs>